um, I want to thank you for attending the class today. What we're going to talk about in this particular class is digital printing. Um, and when I do that, uh, or when I work it with digital files, I use Photoshop uh, almost exclusively. Um, what we're going to do though first is I'm going to show you a little bit uh, in Illustrator. So we will use Adobe Illustrator. Uh, but I'm going to spend most of the time in Photoshop because I think that is where you need to be uh, for this type of printing. It's just um, uh, it's the right tool uh, for the job. So um, before we get to that, let's go ahead and take a look at the website here. So um, what we do is we do something different than anyone else in the industry, right? So we create art files uh, in seven different production uh, techniques. And here's my home page. If you notice this first row down here is our stock art stuff. This row of artwork changes every single Tuesday. So we're constantly updating with new content uh, and it's going to be um, relative to what, what sort of seasons we might have, what sort of uh, sports uh, seasons are in, you know, in, in the time frame kind of thing, that sort of thing. And we also have the embroidery digitized versions of those files uh, just below it. So every Tuesday, that stuff there changes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and look for an image. Um, I won't download it necessarily because I already have it on my computer, but I'll show you how to find things if you uh, if you're interested in looking for them. So I'm looking for a football image and it, what I'm going to do, I just typed in football and it goes to my initial search page. So what I want to do though is I want to sort this guy out. Since this is a digital printing class or if you happen to be working on a digital printing uh, image, just sort for those specific pieces. So I'm going to click on stock art here if you notice in the left hand column. Uh, stock art is selected uh, which means it's only going to search my artwork, it's not going to search the embroidery artwork and right here for the methods it can come, I can come right here down to digital printing I can select that image and now it's going to focus in on the PNG files for our uh, uh, digital printing file that we're looking for. So I typed in football, I'm gonna, I see all the digital files here, I'm going to use this flaming football so if I click on it uh, when this window pops up, you'll see all the different production files that we create. So even though we sorted it by digital printing uh, specifically, we still have access to all these other uh, file formats. So if you click on this little radio button here, it's going to show us a preview. So that's my digital printing file, and I can see what it is. If I look over to the right here, it's a PNG file. Um, that PNG is a high-res image, so it is a 14 by 14 inch uh, file in Photoshop. It is a uh, PNG and it is, a, is set up at 300 pixels per inch. So when you have an image that's 300 pixels per inch, 14 by 14 inches uh, in size, I can do almost anything I want to do with that file because I have enough resolution in the beginning. I have that is built with high res. I can print a magazine uh, cover. I can print a wall graphic. Uh, if you come up, if you ever see me at a trade show, you'll see my graphics printed on our booth wall. Um, so they're really big. I can take this image at 14 inches. We can blow it up, uh, you know, to a booth graphics with no problem. We have customers that use our images for wraps on vehicles. Um, we have one customer that prints them on uh, gym floors for uh, high schools, which is uh, pretty cool. So obviously you can imagine they're pretty big at that point. So if you start off with enough resolution, you can do those kinds of things. Uh, right here is a print cut file. So what I, I want to do is I want to show you, if you have a Roland Versicam or a Mamaki printer cutter, what we do is we add a bleed to the outside edges of the artwork and we assign a cut line to it. So that means we can print this image and then come back and it will automatically cut the cut line that we've already put in here and then you would have an image uh, that does not have a white outline like a white cut contour line. There's uh, most people that create those type of files will have a eighth of an inch or so uh, outside the edge and then what happens is it looks like a sticker and we've gotten lots of complaints. Hey, I, uh, every time I do something it always looks like a sticker so that's the reason we create the bleed to eliminate that sticker effect uh, for you. Uh, screen printing color, this is separated in six colors or less. We should be able to see that in this, when I hit this detailed button. So on a white shirt, it's five colors. A black shirt, it's five colors. So on a color shirt, it would be six because I have to print a black and a white printer for that. Um, you download a DCS 2.0 file, which is a separation uh, EPS file. You bring it into CorelDRAW or Illustrator. 
um, and it comes with a print spec sheet that will tell you if you print these colors in this print order, use these match counts, line screens, and screen angles, then you'll be able to print this image on, a sh on any color shirt uh, successful successfully. Next thing is inkjet laser printing. So um, this file is designed for like an Oki Data laser printer with white toner, that sort of thing. It does not have any soft faded edges, so the uh, the image itself will adhere to the toner, and which would it obviously make it uh, adhere to your shirt there. We have a black and uh, white uh, screen printing black line, we call it. That's just your regular normal vector art. That is a clip art file. So if you're familiar with any kind of clip art, especially clip art that all of my competitors do, that's what that is. But we also take that and make adjustments to it. So here's a vinyl cut detailed, right? So if you're going to cut this image in vinyl, this is designed ready for cutting. It is um, easy to weed with very few pulls and very few cavities, so it's your production time on the vinyl cutting is going to be drastically improved if you use these files that are already built for it. So that's a full-size uh, image for that, maybe say a full front of a shirt, um, and this is a simplified version for a left chest or a hat. So we give you a full-size 10-inch and a 3-inch version as well. But what we're doing is we're looking for the digital file for this particular image. So if I was logged in, I would be able to click this download button, and it would charge me one download, and then we can start working with it. So knowing that, let's go ahead and take it to Illustrator first. So we're uh, in Illustrator here. I'm just going to file new. I'm going to create a new document. 14 by 16 is my standard go-to size. I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. And um, all right, so we have a new image here. So if I go to the File menu, right? What I want to do is I want to place the um, I want to place that image that I just downloaded. So if I go to uh, File menu, come down to Place in Illustrator, and you import it into Corel Draw. Uh, you have to do it that way in order for these things to work properly. So in Illustrator, I'm going to click on my file. Here it is. is my Flaming Football. Here is my link with a checkbox. Uh, make sure this link uh, box is checked. If it's not, you'll have problems uh, moving forward. So once I do that, if I go ahead and hit Place, um, I can put my image right on my page here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Um, can always reduce raster files with no issues whatsoever. Um, you can also enlarge it, like I mentioned before, if they have the proper resolution. So you can you have much uh, a lot of flexibility when it comes to these types of files. All right, so I made it a little bit smaller. Uh, oh, by the way, let me show you one other thing here before I get started, as I already got started there. Right, I'm going to show you this code for a second because this particular code will will allow anybody that comes to this uh, webinar, you guys that are spending time with me today, if you write that code 421-SMS-TVP, that will give you a free month access to our website. So you can download um, up to 200 images on me uh, in any of those file formats that I just went over for you. So if you're vinyl or printing digitally for dye sublimation or direct to garment or uh, large format uh, wall graphics, whatever it is that you do, you can have access to a full month on me. Um, obviously, we'd like you to stick around and stay with us um, because we think we give you enough benefit uh, weekly for that. But um, So go ahead and use that code. I'll give it to you up here again at the end of the class. Uh, now, this code does expire on October 14th of this year. I uh, just want to make sure I point that out. So just for attending, um, you'll be able to take a look at that and use it. So. All right, now I got that business part out of the way. Here's the fun stuff. So I place my image in Illustrator. Now let's set some type. So I'm gonna click on my type tool over here on the left-hand side, and we're going to hold my caps lock on. And I'm a, I already have an idea in mind for the layout here. So uh, what I'm going to do is just type my text in on uh, two rows. Uh, what I want to do is is change this. I'm going to put this high on the right hand side and as long as my text box is selected, if you look over up at the top of the screen, now this is um, the same for Adobe products, all, all of the Adobe suite. So I select a tech, I mean a, an image over here or a tool rather, any of these tools um, that I click on, the stuff at the top will change. So this is an options bar across the top of my screen and a tool bar on the left hand side. Click on a tool, um, I can adjust these things by that, uh, whatever it is up there. In fact, let me go ahead and click off the type. Now you can see what I'm talking about. So 
as you as you change these tools and start working with them, uh, like for instance, if I want to drag this out, I'm going to do that, and you notice that everything at the top changed. So that means whatever this tool is that I'm going to work with, once I initiate something, I can control it by the stuff across the top. Just wanted to point that out because I'll be using that with my text here. So I'm going to select my type. It's selected. Now if you look at the top uh, of the options bar here, I have a left justified, which is what it is now. Um, I can align it center. If I click on that, you'll see what I'm talking about. So it's going to go in the middle here. This is the text itself is aligned center. I want to align it right justification. So if I do that, it comes in this way. Now, a couple things with this image. It's pretty weak. I mean, right? Well, not this image. I think that image is strong as can be, but the text is pretty weak. Very thin, very boring. No fonts. Nothing. I mean, no uh, serifs to it. There's not a lot of space in between. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make adjustments to this, and I'm going to do it this way. So my type is selected, and across the top here, I can see that I have it um, in this default, uh, whatever the program default uh, uh, to the fonts. I'm going to use an Acme font for this which is much bolder and uh, a lot more tough, I guess, is and a lot more of what I'm looking for. Now, I clicked on it, changed the font. I can change the size right here and by going down or up with my arrows here. I can select in here and punch in a number. Um, I can click on this and just choose something like that if I wanted to. Um, so you, you got a lot of options available to you. So what I want to do, th though, first is I like to work in the live mode, and this is what I mean. If I click on this character link, you see this link here for the character palette, right? So I can do all those things right here inside this one little window. So it's going to allow me to change my type size if I want. So if I want to go up a little bit, I can do that. Um, if I look at this image, I'm seeing a lot of space in between this O and this N, right? So if I'm going to grab my type tool here, and I'm going to click in there, and now I'm going to pull up my character palette again. So I can change the kerning. Um, watch, I'm just going to mouse over this. I can set the font size here. I can set the kerning between the two letters. I can set the letting, which is the space between my two lines, which is what I'm going to do here in a second as well. Uh, and I can set these other things like the vertical scale, which will make my, Im my uh, text taller and whatnot. So what I want to do is I want to try to take some space out of here. So I'm clicking on my down arrow on the kerning. And you see how my Jackson word is moving over to my end? That spacing is much more pleasing to me. I think it looks uh, much better. And if I want to get really picky, and I usually do because I'm that kind of picky guy, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit more out of this A and the, uh, and the C here. So I'm just going to click on this down arrow, and it's going to remove some of that spacing. That one looks pretty good. Um, now, what I'm going to do is move my letting, which is uh, right here. So I can increase the letting, which is going to move. Okay, first thing you have to do is click off of it and then click back on your type, let it select itself, because I was, my cursor was selected inside that, in between that A and that C. Um, so if I do this, I can change the letting right here. I can add spacing if I go up, right? Not what I want to do, I want to tighten them up, so I'm going to come in and, uh, and click on the lower, the down arrow here, and it just allows me to get this thing visually pleasing for my eyes anyway, at least what you like. And I'm going to go ahead and probably stop Somewhere around there, I think it looks pretty good. So that looks good to me, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of bars in this left-hand side. In fact, let me do this. Let me show you. This is what we're going to. This is what we're shooting for. Just so you get an idea of where it is I'm heading. I meant to show you that before I started, and I got sidetracked. I get so excited about showing you how to do things, I just kept jump right on in. So that's our Illustrator version, and then um, in a minute I'm going to show you how to do this Photoshop version with the football nibs and everything, I think it's pretty cool. So let's go back to Illustrator here, and I'm going to select my um, rectangle tool, and we're going to create some bars that you just saw there. So if I do that, I'm going to come in here and maybe drag it out that way. Now, since I am an Illustrator, if I click on this bar, hold my Shift key and come down here, I can hold my Option key and it'll duplicate it, right? So now I can set the word, what, Tiger. So notice the Tiger's... I'm going to put right here, but what I'm going to do now, since I clicked my text tool, I'm going to click up here in the top. But before I do that, I'm going to show you why. Because if I come in here and say, hey, I want to put some type in there, it's going to usually, huh, look at that, first time it didn't. It actually, I, I guessed right. I got it right above. It usually wants to add type to this one, uh, to the same Jackson High uh, row of information. So let's do that. I'm going to uh, make it Tigers, and I'm going to, 
just click over here. If I hold my shift key, it'll, it'll uh, constrain the proportions of my, my uh, letters themselves. But I don't have to do that. I can go ahead and drag it out, make it fill this space if I wanted. So I could go along with that, but I think I'm going to change the font. Let's find something else just to make it interesting. Because if you use one type style eh, for multiple looking pieces like this, it can it looks okay, but it, I think you can make it better by just choosing something else. Um, let's do that. Maybe we can do a heavy. I just think it's a different font. It's still a bold font, which I think works really well. Um, that looks pretty good, right? All right, so we have our main image um, almost set up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to colorize this guy. So if I click on this text here, the Jackson High text, and I just use my standard swatches, right? So a lot of people will want to load in Pantone equivalents and change all these other things as far as um, uh, uh, swatches and color palettes go. I don't. Typically, for the most part, I use my standard swatches that Illustrator comes with because it gives me everything I need. I have all the full color capabilities, any color I want. Um, if I don't have an exact color, I can always come over here, double-click my my color and choose any hue and any saturated level that I'm looking for, right? So I have access to everything I need at my fingertips. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to choose a blue um, for the font there. So we selected that, but let's go ahead and put an outline color on it. So if I come to the top, this is just the way I work. You can click on down here on my foreground and my uh, stroke colors. I'm just going to click on this and I'll make it this yellow gold. Right, so you can see that there's a small, very, very thin yellow gold line in there, but I can just go to my stroke uh, right here in my options bar and I can make it thicker, uh, which I think is what I'm going to do there. So that looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and make these bars here gold. I'm going to click on it here, I'll click on it here. So I'll do that and make, uh, make that the same gold color. And I'm going to click in here and I'm going to make this white. All right, so that looks pretty um, pretty strange now since my text disappeared. So one easy way to fix that is just say, I'm going to grab my rectangle tool. This is going to be a black shirt, as you saw the previews there. So if I set this up and I fill it with black, um, I can go to my object menu and I can arrange this thing and I want to send it to the back, right? So I'm just going to... I just made a, a black square there to send it to the back of the image so we can see what our image is going to print like. That looks pretty good. So if I select the type here and hold my shift key and click on all these other component parts, right? That my text is straight across. It looks okay, but it is kind of boring. So if I come over here to my, type, my uh, toolbar and click on my scale tool, if you see this little white triangle in the bottom right-hand corner, I can go to other tools underneath that, and that's the way Adobe shows us multiple tools be, uh, that are nested together. So I'm going to go to this shear tool, and I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to shear it up just to give it some shape and, and dimension and make it a little bit more interesting. That looks pretty good. Uh, now what I want to do is grab my image itself, because you want to make sure, like right now, if you take a look at it, that's two different pieces, right? I have text that is kind of cohesive and kind of a unit, uh, and my image is another unit, but they're separate. Um, if I was going to have do any print cutting or something like that for this image, uh, that might be easier for me to produce the final product, but since I'm printing digitally, what I can do is I can grab this guy, I can bring him over here, and I want to kind of have him come in front of the type. And since it's on a PNG, on a transparent background, it's very easy to do. So with that image selected, I can go to the object menu, arrange, and I'm going to say bring that one to the front. So right now we have my ball, which is overlapping the word Jackson High, and it looks like one cohesive unit. I think it's much more interesting at this point. So that is how I would set something up like this inside of Illustrator. Now one other thing I'm going to mention, it's not necessarily, in fact it's not at all um, digitally printing related, but I wanted to show you this. When I use these swatch colors, if I'm going to screen print or in, if I need to print a, use a spot color, um, if I just come to the swatches and double click the color that I'm wanting to work with, I can change the name if I want to, but right here where it says color type, I can just go to spot color and when I hit OK, if you notice in here, that little icon of that color change, right? I have a white dog-eared corner with a black dot in it. That tells me that this green right now is not CMYK as it says in a title. 
um, right here, it is my green. So if I wanted to hit this, get, rename it Billy Bob's Green or whatever it is that you want to work with, you can give it that name. And if you're going to print as a screen printing, that thing would come out on its own piece of film. Um, it's just how to use spot colors. If I'm going to create a logo in Illustrator, and it's going to be a two or three flat color job like this one is, um, I can use those spot colors uh, the same exact way. But since we're printing digitally, CMYK stuff is perfectly fine. Uh, full color capabilities, right? All right, so that um, I think looks pretty good, but I think it's going to look a whole lot better inside of Photoshop. So let me go ahead and uh, open Photoshop for you. I'm going to double click my PNG file here. That's the, w the one that we're working with. So if I just double click it. I don't want to do that because it's going to open up in Max Preview application. So I could cla I could grab it and bring it into uh, to Photoshop icon and let it go there, and I'll have um, the window now currently. So this is my actual image that we downloaded off the website. If you take a look on my layers here, um, I have one layer. I have a transparent background and I know it's transparent because I see these gray and white checkers. That is a representation of transparent pixels universally for all software packages. So if you see that in any other application, that's all that means. It means it's a transparent background. It means that I can stack things above and below this particular image uh, as much as I want. So we just downloaded this file. What I want to do is I want to show you what my um, image size is. So if I go to the image menu, come down to image size, this is going to tell us what we're dealing with. So right now we have a 14 inch wide image and it's at 300 pixels per inch, right? That's the high resolution I was talking about. And right now this thing is 43.7 megabytes, just, just this one image as it is. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the canvas size. So you can do a couple things. I can reduce the size of this uh, football, which I probably will in a minute. But we're at 14 inches wide by only 12 inches tall. So actual t-shirt might uh, fit better format-wise as 14 by 16, let's say. So if I go to the image, I'm going to come down to canvas size. And this time what I want to do is I want to make this 16 inches, right? But I want to set it to put my artwork up at the top. So you see if I click on this little anchor point, that means from right here it's going to stay there and I'm going to add all of my space down and out from that point. So as long as you select it like this and I hit OK, watch what happens. When I preview the image, my image stayed in position and I added all my new stuff down here at the bottom. Now I still think it's too big for the image that we're working with, so if I go to the edit menu and come down to free transform or hit this little command T or control T on your PC, that's going to allow me to adjust the size of this guy. So you see that? When I go there, I can grab it. Now if I hold the shift key, I can constrain the proportions. If I don't, look what happens. I can skew it and make it look all distorted and weird. Don't want to do that. Hold the shift key, keep the proportions in there, um, and double click it inside of the image there to set it, and we got something like this. All right? So let's go ahead and set some type for this guy again like we did before. So if I click on my type tool uh, in Photoshop, I can come in here, click here, and I'm going to hold my caps lock on, and I'm going to name it Jackson High on two rows. Uh, if I hit Command-T again, I can change the scale of this guy by holding my proportion, uh, I mean my shift key to hold my proportions in, and just make that font whatever size I want. If I don't hold my shift key, I could stretch it up like you can do in Corel or Illustrator. You can do any of that stuff that you want to do in Photoshop. That's why I always say if you're going to print digitally, you don't need to be in anything other than Photoshop. It does everything you want it to do. Um, if matter of fact, let me show you something else that a lot of people don't realize is even in Photoshop. So I'm not going to apply this right now. I'm going to get rid of this part and, and just have Jackson for a moment. And um, I'm going to go back to this image here just in a second, but all right, so I got one word, uh, Jackson. So if I double click my T and my layers here, see in my layer stack here, if I double click the T, it's going to select the type. When the type is selected, if you look at the top of the screen, I can adjust it. I can change the font. I can change the size, um, the justification like we did in Illustrator, very similar. I can actually change the color, so I can make it any color I want uh, just by going up there and changing it. You can look on screen. We just changed it, so let's just hit OK to that. But I wanted to show you this. See this little T with the hill? If I click on that, what that is, that is our warp text tool. And all that means is the enveloping tools that we're familiar with in lots of programs, right? So I can arch it. 
Um, uh, and if you notice, when it comes in, it came in at 50, right? So it goes, it always does a plus 50. That's pretty strong, pretty steep. So you can control it by this little slider. I can make it more if I think it needs to go some more. I can cut it back so I get more something more pleasing, and I can even go in the other direction if I wanted to. So Photoshop's got a, a lot of power, a lot of capabilities. I mean, I can do a flag. You know, again, I can control the amount of that twist by here. Um, let's see, you got an arc, right? Typical screen print related type of things. I mean, you can have you get all this typical control that you want and uh, anyway I think it's pretty cool. I'm not going to do that for di this particular design but to show you that that capability is built into Photoshop I think is um, something that you should know uh, because I use it quite a bit. So here's my Jackson High. Alright so let's go ahead and make it uh, larger. So Command T or Control T will give me my uh, free transform option which means I can scale it. So I'm click on my corner piece, hold my shift key and blow it up like this. So kind of set it in place, see what you want to do with it and double click inside it and it would go ahead and accept it and click on it that way. Alright, so if I double click my type tool here again it brings up these justification things just like Illustrator did. I'm just going to kind of show you that so you can see uh, I can make it left justified center or right, you know, just again does everything that I need it to do. Alright, so in Photoshop this is my layer. So right now my if you look at the layer stacking, if I turn off the eyeball from my image, the image is gone. Turn the eyeball back on and I can see it. If I want to do the same thing with my type, I can click on that and I can turn the eyeball back on and it comes there. So right now my type tool is sitting above my football. So if I grab my move tool, which is my arrow tools here, I can go ahead and move this up. And if you notice, the type is above uh, my football image. If I want to change the position of that, all I got to do is move my layer in the stacking order to underneath. And then now I can move it in and kind of position it like I want it. Right? So if I have 50 layers, I can have 50 things stacked in and out and above and below themselves all day long. Uh, super powerful tool, this layers tool here in Photoshop. Alright, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add the other stuff. So I'm going to click on, click off my type, I'm going to click on a new layer here. So I'm going to mouse over that and it says create a new layer. So I click on it and what I'm going to do is grab my marquee tool and I'm going to do the same thing as I did before. Before I do that actually I want to change my font here. So I'm going to double click my type the T in the type uh, layer and let's go back to my um, Acme font because I think it's a really good font for this particular piece. That looks good. Yep. Alright, so now I'm going to go to my new layer that I created just a minute ago and I'm going to create those bars again. So I just click and drag uh, out. I can select it like that. So I'm going to go ahead and make it uh, a color. And maybe we want to make it a nice golden yellow. Kind of like the football. If I wanted to, actually I could come in here and select that actual same color to keep it matching. So I'm going to find a spot maybe right here. Click on that. And that's my uh, the yellow. If I click here, I can click on the red. You, you can pull a color out of the image itself is what I'm doing. So that little crosshair that you see moving around, I can select the color that I'm looking for. So I think I'm going to go ahead and go with a good saturated golden yellow just like that. Hit OK. Now in order to fill this, I can come over here and um, look for the paint bucket tool. And I can come in here and click and it will fill it that way. Um, or I could uh, Command Z that, Control Z. Uh, what I like to do is I hit Option Delete. That's a shortcut. Um, I'm not even sure where that would be up here in, this, in these modes anymore. Uh, but Option Delete or Alt Backspace will uh, fill any selected area with the foreground color. So you see the foreground color here on the left-hand side is yellow. Um, my background is white, so I'm going to switch it back that way. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that I duplicate this. So if I click on this layer, that I just created that little bar in, and I want to have two bars just like we did before. So I select this top layer, and I come down here and I 
drop it on top of my new layer icon. Now I have two of them. So with my move tool selected, which I hit the V key on my keyboard or just grab my arrow tools, that's going to allow me to move things around. And just like in any other program, if I want to keep it straight in line, if I hold my shift key, it's going to keep it lined up uh, with itself, right? So I can move in straight directions or straight lines. So now what I'm going to do is I'll click off of that, and I'm going to go ahead and set some the uh, tiger's word. See that? So when I clicked here, see how it adds it to the same uh, uh, text? It thinks I want to add something in this space, which I don't. So I'm going to click off of it, go back to my type tool, and click up here. Just click someplace else other than where you, you know, where that happens to be. And it'll, it'll allow you to set some new type. I'm going to bring it in place. Again, if I hit, if I go to edit, free transform, I just hit the command or control T uh, command, it gives me this my text box. Holding my shift key will constrain the proportions, which I think I'm going to do. That looks pretty good. I'll bring it here. Double click inside of it. Uh, but now, so if I double click the word tigers, I'm going to go back to, um, the Franklin Gothic, I just think they look nice together. Uh, reposition it just a little bit because every font is different. Uh, I can nudge it up with an arrow key, right? So I can make it hug the top or try to center it this way. If I bring up, again, Command T, I can stretch it out a little bit more to fill the space. Now, I stretch it out. If I want to keep that, I can hit the Enter key or the Return key or double click inside this shape, this selected square, uh, and then it sets it. All right, so what I want to do, though, is make that word tigers black. First thing I'm going to do is make the background black like we did before. Go new, I put a new layer there, went all the way to the bottom of my stack in order. So if you notice over here my foreground and background uh, colors here, this little piece, if I click on this little bitty one, you see it's very small and it's black and white. If I click on that, that's going to go to default keys, or colors, rather. So what that means is my foreground color is going to be black, my background color is going to be white. Now, I can also, if I hit Command-Z, no, it's not going to do that. So if I, cl I can click on this little arrow piece here and do this to switch back and forth, or if I hit my D key, watch this, if I hit the D key on my keyboard, that's the default colors. So my foreground color is going to be black, my background color is going to be white. Now if I wanted to switch them, again, I could click here, I could click here, or I can hit the X key, and it's going to exchange those two. Comes in real handy when you start playing around and clicking on lots of colors in your image. It just you go right back to black by hitting the D key and you're ready to go. It's just a kind of a shortcut that I find myself using quite a bit, so I wanted to point that out for you because uh, I think you will as well. Um, so right here, um, let's take a look. We have typeset. We don't have any outlines to it like we did before, but we're going to go ahead and work on some of that as well. Uh, but first thing I'm going to do is we're going to – let's go ahead and uh, skew this guy. So if I click on my Jackson High, hold my Shift key and select my Tigers. I'm going to turn off my football right now because I'm not fooling with that. I just want to take this image and skew it. So um, let's do that. I'm going to select uh, – all this, let's see, I'm going to pull this out. So I can just hold this bottom one and shift click all the way up. So I have the tiger selected, um, the Jackson High selected, and these other bits and pieces here. One of these was supposed to be a black background, that, which I did not fill. So let me do that first. So option delete fills it. If it's black, oh my goodness, my image is gone. That's only because it's at the top of the stacking list. And if I turn my eyeball off, I can see all my artwork. So turn my eyeball back on, and now grab this guy and put it all the way at the bottom. So now we can see what we're dealing with. So now I'm going to click on the text tool, on my Jackson High, rather, and hold my Shift key and select all these component pieces. So now let's go ahead and skew that. So if I go to the Edit menu, I can come down to uh, Transform, and you see the skew here? I want to click on that tool, and that will allow me to shear this guy up just like we did in Illustrator, just to add some interest and some movement to this image. I think that looks pretty good. Again, I can hit the Enter key, I can hit the Return key, or I can just double click inside that little box and it sets it in place. So now they're all selected here, right? My Move tool is selected in my upper left-hand corner, so I could grab all that as a unit and move it around uh, as I want.
because they're all one piece now. So a couple of things I want to do with this guy though, I want to change this tigers to white and I want to add a, um, a stroke or an outline to this type. All right, so let's do that. So the tigers word, if I click on it and double click the T, it selects my tigers and then look at the top. The top has blue because it's blue right now. So if I click on this little box, now I can make that color anything I want. I'm, I'm going to make it white, but I can make it absolutely anything I want by just going to the upper corner here and I hit OK. And we just changed the color of the tigers to white. Um, now I want to add a stroke to this type. Well, it's a little different in Photoshop, but it's super easy, just as easy. So my text tool is selected. Uh, my layer is selected. So now if I double click inside here, um, I get all these things, right? But if you notice, there is no stroke tool, there is no outline tool, that sort of thing. But I, don't, I just wanted to show you that. So this is how you do it. So you select a word or whatever shape, doesn't need to be a word, it could be absolutely anything. You select that, and then right here where it says this little FX icon, that is the layer styles, right? So what do you want to do? I'm going to click on that. Well, right now, I, I think I want to add a stroke to it, right? That's what we initially wanted to come in here for. So if I come in here and I hit stroke, look what happens. It automatically adds a stroke. I can see it here, and this, this word stroke is selected. It's set to 16 points, and it just remembers whatever it was the last time I worked with it. Um, it remembers what that is. So I don't know if I want a red one. I think I want a yellow one. So um, I can come in here, make an adjustments to that. But if I just click around here, um, I can show all the effects because I'm just trying to create something here. So all these things is what this window, this layer styles window allows us to do. Um, now, when it comes to this guy, layer styles came out in version 6, uh, not CS6, but literally version 6 is probably 12 or maybe even 13, 14 years ago. It's like forever ago. And when it did, it, 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 it was one of the coolest things I've ever seen, and this is what I mean by it. So uh, let me go ahead and cancel this, and I'm going to show you the, kind of the history of this thing, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to make this look really, really cool. So if I go to my window uh, menu across the top, I'm looking for styles. Layer styles in Photoshop is a awesome tool. Here's the thing. Uh, if I select my type that, that I want to make an adjustment to, again, does not have to be type, could be anything. I can make it, I can draw an amoeba shape and just fill it with something. But look what happens when I push my button. Uh, so this is selected, and I push the button, and I can see I got a little shine to this guy. It's a, it's a little bit darker blue here, a little bit lighter blue. It's supposed to look like some kind of shimmer. And as you click, these are the default layer styles that uh, that ship with. Photoshop. Uh, and I can't say this anymore because this last version they added a couple of new ones, but I can tell you this, they've all they've always been the same since uh, they came out in version 6 and the problem with it is they're terrible. They're, you're not going to, I doubt that you find use for one, maybe two of these guys. I mean look at this thing. What is that? So uh, they're not very powerful, they're not very strong but what they're doing is extremely powerful and extremely strong because I'm pushing a button and I'm changing the way this stuff works. Um, and as you can see, right, push a button. I mean, what is that? What would you ever use this for? You can't. It's just crazy. So anyway, as you click around, you see all these things. All this stuff that I'm showing you so far is standard um, regular ones right out of Photoshop default. So if you've never used Photoshop before and you pull it up, that's what you're going to see. Problem with that, you ain't gonna be able to use it, or not very often, or not very good, right? So you can start off with these things and you can make adjustments to it. Or you can go to the internet and you can search Photoshop uh, layer styles and you will find a boatload of stuff out there. I mean, people have a lot of free time on their hands, they just do. So they create a bunch of cool things, and I just happen to have a couple here, I cleared them all out because of. Uh, it gets to the point where I was you know, scrolling and scrolling and scrolling through this stuff. Um, so these are some animal ones I thought were pretty cool. They're fun, you know, obviously. Uh, that's a what, tiger, here's a cheetah, and well, there's a giraffe, you know, you get the idea. So it's really neat because it uses imagery to create something. Um, and the nice thing is if I click on it, you can see what's going on. So you select a, a layer style, and you look over in the layers window, and you have this little effects icon. 
If I turn off this little eyeball where it says effects, it just hides all those effects, doesn't show it to you. So turn it back on, I can hide the stroke, um, the pattern overlay or whatever. But if I want to make adjustments to this, uh, and I don't know why I stayed on this particular piece, um, but if I double click this FX icon, what that's going to do is going to allow me to make some changes here. Right? So I can change my stroke, so if I want to make it a color, I can do that. See? Uh, any color I want by just changing the hue switch here. So that's pretty strong, pretty cool. Uh, I can change the pattern overlay. See this little scale link? I can change the size of those uh, lines, the, the stripes there. So if I do that, it it allows me to scale up or down the actual image or the texture that I'm working with to fit in that particular piece, right? So, and I'm going to show you exactly how I would do something like that right now. So if you see in the, my layer style, starting about, where is it, starting here, starting right here, um, you might be able to see that on screen. That's a football nib. So if I mouse over that, you have uh, this thing says football one, this says football two, and then basketball one, basketball two. Now these are layer styles that are on my website for free. So these are some things I think you might use, right? So I can use this football textures inside this image because it makes sense for my image, right? So uh, if you go to greatdangraphics.com and go to the free stuff, you can download these layer styles and you can load them in yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and here's what we have in there. So let's go ahead and take a look. So if I double click this effects, um, it's showing me what I have, what we're using in this layer style in order to have this build up here. So uh, I'm going to hit cancel for one second. I want to turn on my football, by the way. And see, my football is now underneath my type. What I want to do is I want to kind of get an idea of the whole image. So if I grab my football, go to the very top, it brings it in front of my word, right? So I think I'm going to go ahead and hold my shift key and click on these other layers. I want to move it down just a bit. I want to make sure that it goes over, but I want to be able to see this as a C and a K here at you know my letters. So I'm going to lower those, um, and I can't go up with my football. I could have uh, if I had more space, but it's already at the maximum of my page size there. So I uh, just wanted to do that. Now what I want to do is go ahead and click on this effects icon, because now what I want to do is I want to adjust the size of these nibs. I think they look pretty good, but they're still a little bit too small. So if you come to the pattern overlay, I can scale it up. And I can choose what I think works as far as um, a size in conjunction or in relationship to the text that I'm putting it in. So if that type, I think that looks pretty good because I can look at it and immediately see that they're football nibs. It looks like a, the skin of a football. I think it's cool. Now, if you notice the stroke is black and it's only at two pixels and you don't really see it, well, I can get rid of that um, or change the color. So I'm going to hit the stroke color box here. Now if I mouse out, I can select the same yellow, which I think might be kind of a cool idea, and add that yellow outline. And I change the color, so I hit OK. Now I can change the size by just moving this size uh, slider here at the top. So I click on that, and I'll do this, and I just move it around until I get an idea and see that looks pretty good. I think that works. right? So um, if I click here, I have a bevel and emboss in this. If I turn this little checkbox off, it turns that part off. Uh, I'm not sure that this is necessary because of the size of it. So what we can, what that means is we can make an adjustment and see if we want to keep it or take it all the way out. So here's my size at eight pixels. If I make it a little larger, right? Just keep going. You can see what I'm doing. I'm starting to make it look pillowy and soft, and well, that's kind of cool because football has got air in it and whatnot. You know, might be a, an idea for you. So um, maybe we do it. What the heck, right? Let's go somewhere around here. I think that's interesting. Don't know that my footballs uh, shine. But, hey, you know, it's just something to look at, something to play with. So let's go ahead and do that. I can change the, uh, the depth of them, right, so how high and how strong they are. Just come in here and play. You can't hurt it. You can't break it. Just move uh, this stuff around and kind of see what you like. I can change the direction of things like that just by moving this whole slider all the way around. This little wheel. It's not a slider, I suppose. So. Uh, you get the idea, right? So, um, I don't know. Maybe we like that. Maybe we don't. But you, all you got to do is play around with it and see what works for you. I think that looks pretty good. So, um, we can go there. Uh, we could, has an outer glow. 
that you can't really see. I'm going to turn that off. If I click on this effects icon and say show all effects, if I want to add stuff to this effect that is not in my current one, what that means is you can start off with one effect, my effect, anybody else's that you find on the internet or whatever, one of the standard Adobe ones. Start off with that and tweak it like I'm doing. So if you notice this little image here in my window, I got a yellow box now and I have my bevels and stuff. I've changed it, right? I can save this. I'm not quite finished messing around with it maybe. Maybe we're going to do an, um, an inner glow. So if I select that, let's take a look and see what we can do here. You know what? I'm going to turn my bevel and emboss off because uh, just had an idea. Let's see what we can do. So inner glow is just going to make the inside of my letters glow from the outside edges, right? So I'm going to do this a little bit. Can't really see much, but I'm going to take my stroke all the way up. I'm um, going to change my size a little bit more. And my opacity right now is only at 27, but if I bring this opacity all the way up, um, you can see what we're doing here. We're, we're just adjusting making a white outline on the inside, uh, which you can't really tell. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to change my stroke color. And that, the only reason we can't see it very well is because it's the stroke's the wrong color. But if I make my stroke in blue, maybe we can do a little blur, uh, brighter blue here. There you go. So I hit OK to that. Maybe we like that. Maybe that's my team's colors, right? Maybe uh, whatever. I mean, if your team color is green, make sure you set it to a green. And you can set the saturation inside this box. This is no saturation. That's white. This is full-on saturation, and this is all the other values. So you pick something that matches the team that you're playing with and or that you're trying to create uh, stuff for. Let's just say that just to be different. I'm going to click on that. I think that looks pretty good. Right? So if I click on this new style button, it's going to be my uh, – I went to Archbishop Shaw High School here. And I'm just going to name it Shaw Style because that's – if I wanted to do something for Shaw, I can – for football team, I can always come to this. I can save it. I hit OK, and I hit OK to this. And now if I look in my layer style, look, oops, look at the very bottom. All the way to the bottom, I'm going to mouse over my styles box and it says Shaw. So now I can always have it with me. I saved it. I made adjustments to it. I made it mine, you make them yours for whatever team, whatever job it is that you're working with, and you can go ahead and use it always. You just save it and it's, it's ready, it's built in, ready to go. All right, so um, let's see, do I have anything else? I know we got to save time for some questions here, um, but I think that's pretty good. Let me see, do we have any questions? No questions. Wow, that's a first. All right, well, um, I'll give you a couple more minutes if anybody wants to throw a question in there. If not, uh, I want to thank you all for coming. Before I do that, i got to go ahead and make sure that I show you this again. This code right here is going to get you 200 pieces of artwork on me. You sign up for the subscription, you have a full month uh, available to you. Go give it a shot. I think you're going to find that the artwork that we create is built for what it is that we do every day. Uh, and I mean, when I say we, I'm talking about all of us in the industry as garment decorators. We have files that are built for those uh, particular things. All right, here's one. What for, what version of Photoshop do you recommend? Actually, everything I've showed you will work with any version of Photoshop uh, from version 6 way back when. I didn't do any of the new tools uh, since. So I'm not uh, – obviously right now I think you can only get one from Adobe as a subscription service, so I'm not sure if you can – if you have an old one on a computer somewhere, you might be okay with that. Um, it doesn't really matter. They're all good, at least after version 6. Otherwise, you won't have anything available to you in your, uh, uh, in your layer style stuff because they wouldn't exist. What about current members? What about current members? Yeah, good question. Uh, thank you um, for that. Uh, that much I can tell you. I really appreciate the business. I can tell you what we would like is we would like our current members to let us know what it is that they want artwork-wise and want us to create because um, we would uh, really like to create the stuff that our uh, members are looking for. Uh, let's see. How can we create a 
cut contour for the football or does it come with one? So it actually comes with one. You just have to download a different version. You see here on the website, it says print, printing cutting. Download this file. And then I'm going to zoom in on it. And you can see it's just in here barely as a little very thin green line, but the cut contour is already on there. So you don't have to create it. We took care of that for you. All right. All right, great. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any Illustrator free downloads available? No, we don't. We have um, layer styles for Photoshop. Uh, Illustrator gets a little wonky when it comes to special effects. They don't like to work uh, very very well. They don't play well with others. And what I mean by that is third-party developers or things like that. There's not a whole lot of that going on on the Illustrator side, unfortunately. All right, great. Thank you. I'm glad you uh, glad you liked it. That everything I showed you today is exactly how I do it in my studio. How my team does it when they're working on things because it uh, it actually works and it works very efficiently and very quickly. So, um, all right. I guess that's it. So we're done early. Uh, I appreciate you guys uh, hanging out and sticking with me. <laughs>